Have you heard the good news? God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. So do I. Matthew chapter number 2, verses 1 and 2. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Wise men still seek him. This scripture declares that God speaks to us through dreams and through visions. And wise men at that time were those who would see a vision and they were drawn to that vision because there was a revelation from God. It was not just what they saw, it was the revelation that they received from what they saw. Everybody can see the same thing, but not everybody gets the same revelation. Two people can hear the same thing or can witness the same account, but have a different revelation and, and how you have, have experienced what you've just experienced. We're all going to go through things, but do we get the revelation that God wants us to get as we're experiencing life's ups and downs? The revelation was so important. Wise men were highly regarded during this time, during biblical times. Wise men were, were astrologers, and they would see a certain vision, and they would recognize that God was speaking through that vision. And they would interpret that vision and they would give the revelation that God gave them to the people of God. So wise men at that time were part of the staff and council of kings. When Daniel was, I mean, Nebuchadnezzar was given a dream that was disturbing, he brought his wise men, his magicians, his soothsayers in. He says, can you give me the dream that I just dreamed and give me the interpretation? The wise man says, King, how can someone give you the dream? If you would give us the dream, we would tell you the interpretation. But how can anyone but God know the dream? The king became disturbed. He says, if you really are of God, then you will know the dream. And you'll also know the interpretation. He became furious. And he says, I'm going to kill every one of you until somebody gives me the dream and interpretation. I think that will separate the wise man from the true wise man. Let's go to Daniel chapter number 2, verse 19. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. So Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Let's keep that for a moment. So the, the dream was revealed to Daniel. So Daniel didn't just see this, see the king or say, okay, I know exactly what is going on. The dream was revealed to him by God. God revealed this dream and then Daniel began to bless God for what he had just revealed. Look at verse number 27. So Daniel goes before the king. Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king has demanded, the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, and the soothsayers cannot declare to the king. But there is a God in heaven who reveals, again, get, reveals secrets, and he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days. So he's clearly saying that this dream that you have, no one can reveal this to you, but God has revealed that to me. And only through that revelation that you'll know that God really is God, and you'll know that God is actually speaking through me a prophet or a man of God. So his credibility and his credence came from not the vision and not from Daniel, but from the revelation that God gave him. Now back to the wise man. Wise men, number one in, your, in your, your outline, wise men are visionaries. Wise men are visionaries. Visionaries. And the first thing about wise men is wise men act on the vision. Make note of that. Wise men are visionaries and wise men act on the vision. Anyone can hear something, see something. But you may have done that and seen something and heard something and not acting on it. 
You may have had a great idea. God may have given you a vision. God may have given you some kind of invention or something that is new, something that is revolutionary, and you saw it and you didn't act on it. And what happened a short time later? Somebody else came up with your invention. Someone else went forward with what God gave you. You didn't act on it. And because you didn't act on it, you missed the opportunity and you, you, you missed what God was trying to do through you. And you don't want to miss your vision because you're not acting on what God is showing you. These wise men saw this star and they didn't just say, wow, that's a wonderful star. Look at that. That is awesome. And then the next day they said, did you see that star last night? That was incredible. No, though they saw it and they recognized that there was something about that. And you've got to see in a vision that God is speaking to you through the vision that God is allowing you to see. You're praying sometimes, you're asking God for something, and God will show you a vision, and you've got to recognize that this is a link between the vision and what you've been praying for. And you have to act on the vision. Because if you don't act on a vision, then how can God move you? You want God to just take you and just move you in the place where you want to be. But God doesn't steer parked cars. You've got to be moving before you start to get in direction from God. So first, you have to act on the vision. Number two, you have to see beyond the vision. When you see something, you can't just stay there. You've got to know that beyond what I see, there's something greater. God doesn't let me just see this because he just wants to show me something. No, God said there's something beyond the vision. And for those that are true visionaries, you can see that this, this may not be what you want, but there's something here. And I've got to look beyond this because God is showing me in this something greater. And if you can't see the greater vision with what you're seeing, you'll miss out. You'll just think that there was something awesome that you saw. Oh, that was really extraordinary. That was remarkable. But you'll miss the opportunity that God was trying to show you something even greater. The wise men, the magi, were not the only ones to see that star that night. Everybody saw it that was in their vicinity. But the wise men saw beyond the star. They knew that there was something even greater, something that God was revealing to them. And they had to see that vision as being something that they couldn't just step, sit back and stagnantly just watch and let it go by. Another one is they had to wait for the revelation. Oftentimes, you may be like me, get excited, and you start moving as soon as you see something. You, you're impulsive. You see it, oh, that's, it's it, it's got to be God. You see something and you're ready to just throw everything behind it, rather than waiting for God to give you the revelation about how to do it and what direction to go and give you the full revelation about what he is trying to show you. That doesn't mean you just stop and just wait and ask God to do everything. You start moving in that direction, and then you wait for God to, to confirm that with some revelation. I was, we were talking about moving to Scottsdale, my family here, and I wanted to move to Scottsdale like over a year ago. I was ready. I mean, God, this is, this is the place for me to be. I want to be here in the community. And we were looking for houses to buy in Scottsdale. Now, and we've had several houses, uh, but we purchased several homes, and they were always mountain homes. And I love mountain views. I, 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 that's just, I'm an eagle. So I, I looked around here, and I didn't see any mountains around here. So okay, God, you know, you know what, maybe we could build a mountain somewhere around here. <laughs> but I was looking for a home right here, but there was nothing here that really was what I felt that, what God, you know, I had this and I want this. And a year later, here we are, we still have not found a home to purchase. We did, we are in the neighborhood, but, we, but there's a home that we're renting. Because the vision for God was not purchasing at this time. See, you may want to do something that you want to do at this time, and God says, you, you have a wonderful vision, but my vision is for you to do what I need you to do right here. Your vision, what you really want, will come in due season. But there's something that God wants you to do right here. Doesn't mean that God has forgotten about you or that God does not want you to have what you want to have, but there's a direction and a flow in which God takes you. And God may not give you exactly what you want at that particular time. Stay with the vision that God has given you. God has a plan. Is that right? 
God's plan is awesome and God has not forgotten about you. But it's according to God's direction and how God is going to do it. Because we have plans for God. Okay, God, and here's what I need. I need this right, right here. And this is our vision for God. But God says that our vision has to submit to God's vision. Which means that our vision may wait for a while. Doesn't mean that it's not coming, but it may not be coming the way and the time in which you would expect it to. You still bless the Lord. You're going to bless the Lord at all time. And his praise will continually be in your mouth. Even though you may not be at the place where you want to be. You may not be on that mountain right now. But God says your blessing right now is in the valley. You will get there. But know that God is still with you as you're walking through the valley experiences. Let's give God an amen. Number two. Number two. Wise men seek the company of wise men. Mm, how many times have we gotten a vision and talked to the wrong people about our vision? Oh, the wrong people can talk you out of your vision. Don't share your vision with people that are not visionaries. Because all they can give you is an, is an opinion. That's all they've got is an opinion. If you want to be in high position, you've got to associate with people in high position. Wherever you want to be, you've got to create an association of people with people that can help you get to where you ultimately want to go. That means you have to leave the association of people around you that cannot help you and cannot take you where you're going. As soon as the wise men saw this vision, other wise men saw the vision. And when wise men come together with one appointed plan and with a divine purpose, God is going to do something awesome in their lives. Amen? You've got to get around people that have a divine plan and are willing to follow God. And we are going to hold on to this. And there may be some rough terrain. There may be people that will start with us that may not finish with us. There may be some obstacles along the way. You're going to have some tribulation. There will be persecution. But you know that you're on a divine assignment. And you're going to finish what God has given you to do. It's going to be difficult at times. You're going to have a season in your life where you're going to wonder, God, where are you? But God never will leave you. He will never forsake you. Just stay on the plan that God has given you. Keep associating with people that's going to pick you up when you're down. So at point, you're going to need to help them. But you're going to stay there knowing that God is in this. And when God is in this, you're going to stay the course. You're going to keep the faith. And you're going to continue to fight the good fight. Because God is ultimately taking you someplace. It's easy sometimes to feel like giving up because it's not happening your way. But it doesn't mean it's not happening God's way. Because the Bible says that God's ways are not your ways. His thoughts are not your thoughts. So when you're on a plan and on a pathway, put your way aside. Put your thoughts aside. Whatever brings and whatever comes, just trust that God already knows and God's going to carry you through it. Psalms number one in verse number one. This is a great memory verse. It says that blessed is the man or woman who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. You can see something and you'll miss the revelation if you don't wait on God. People can get excited about the vision because you can explain it to them and people are ready to go. But people have to receive the revelation. If they go on your excitement, they can only go for so long. When you're excited, you can get people excited around you just by being excited. But you've got to get with people that are really seeking God. Because if you are the source, if you're the inspiration, if you're the motivation, it can only go so long. Even with our children now, we're explaining to them that at some point you've got to transfer from from us to God. God has to be your direction. You've got to follow God. We are, we're going to take you only so far. And at that point, you have to now trust God. You've got to lean and depend on God. We will not be there for every decision that you have to make. For every direction you have to go, you've got to start asking God yourself, where do you need to go? Be in the counsel of godly people. God will always give you somebody that you can talk with and talk to that can help guide you. And look at Psalms 1 and verse number 5. A wise man will hear 
and increase learning. A wise man will hear and increase learning and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. Have you ever been in a place where you didn't want wise counsel? <laughs> I just want somebody to tell me what I want to hear. I don't want wise counsel because wise counsel might tell me that I'm wrong. And deep down, you know when you you know when you're not right. Bless this mess, God. Wise counsel that God gives you might say, no, you're doing it wrong. Or what's wrong with you? That's a good woman. That's a good man. But you're mad because of something that went on. So I don't, I'm, not, I'm not into it right now. You get around unwise counsel and they say, well, I'll tell you what I would do. I'm, that happened to me. Don't listen to that stuff. When they don't have anything and anything to lose and they're going to give you counsel, counsel with somebody who's been around there a couple of times, someone who's been through the bushes, someone who's been through the fire, someone that can give you some real wisdom that can say, what you're going through, just get up and get back out there. No, we don't want to hear that. We want people to tell us, you know, if you could just take a rest, just stop. You can move in with me. One thing my mother did that was very good, my mother fixed it so that we didn't ever want to move back with mama's house. <laughs> I don't know how she did it. Like those eagles that makes it uncomfortable in the nest. When the birds get so big, they start to put stuff in the neck that pricks them and makes it uncomfortable, so they have to get out of the nest. Mom did an awesome job. But attain to wise counsel. People that God's going to place there, not to tell you what you want to hear, but they will tell you what you need to hear. Amen? That's so much more important than, than what you want to hear. It's what you need to hear. That's what's going to take you to the next place. Tell me what I need to hear. God, may not, it may not feel good to hear what you need to hear. You may not like it. It may make you uncomfortable. But it's going to help save you a whole lot of pain and grief along the way. You've already seen the revelation for something that needs to happen. And you're still trying to force your way through this. And something God may be saying, no, do something different. But no, you, no God, we, we, we can make this work. And we're, we're, we're not negating good counsel because we want to try and force our way through with God. Number three, wise men complete their divine mission. Wise men complete their divine mission. There's some things that God wants you to do. And all we have to do in this whole life is just complete the assignment that God placed us on. But we can get so distracted by so many things. Things of this world seem to be so important. This little temporary existence can weigh us down, can cause us to lose sight of our divine mission that God has us on while we're here. Don't lose sight of that. Let's look at Matthew and look at what the wise man did in, verse, in chapter 29 and verse number, pick it up verse number 11. When they heard the king, they departed. Okay, let's, let me just set this up, what's going on here. The wise man came to Jerusalem and they went to the palace and they asked King Herod, where is he? That will be born king of the Jews. For we have come to worship him. We've seen his star and come to worship him. When they heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. There was young child. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they had come into the house, remember not a manger. Now Jesus was, a, was no longer a baby. We think that the wise men were there during the nativity when Jesus was born. Wise men were not there. Amen? The wise men were on the way. So if you want to make a nativity scene that's correct, take the wise men, put them around the back of the house, and say the wise men are coming. So people want to know, where are your wise men? Well, they're, they're around. They're on their way. They're not here yet. So by the time they arrived, Jesus was in a house with, his, with Mary and Joseph, and he was a young child. And see, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. They re rejoiced. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and what? One more time. Fell down and what? Worship him. Worship him. So this is the first mention 
of gifts associated with Jesus. The night that Jesus was born, the shepherds didn't bring gifts. Right? The wise men brought gifts. But the gifts was not their focus. Their focus was worship. Got it? So wise men, real wise men, come to worship. Not what they're receiving. They came to give. They fell down at Jesus' feet and they worshiped. See, that is what God seeks more than anything else. It's wonderful that we celebrate that we have a great time in worship, but our focus is not us. Our focus is God. And when we come into the house of God, our purpose is to worship. Worship God. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Again, when you come into the house of God, you bring gifts that's fitting for a king. When you come into the sanctuary and to the presence of God, you do not come to see the pastor. You come to experience the presence of God. The greater your relationship, the greater you're willing to give somebody. Is that right? When you have a great relationship with somebody, you're not going to give them some little cheesy Christmas gift if you get them something. You're going to get them something that's worthy of that relationship. If you really truly value that relationship and value that person, you're going to value what you give them. So they came, worshiped him, and they opened their treasures and gave him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And number four, after knowing Jesus, wise men never return by the same way. Oh, I love it. They never returned. When they came into Jerusalem, they went to Herod. Herod says, let me find Jesus and then tell me where he is. Then I will go and worship him also. All right? But then they got the revelation. Remember, when you're in God, God's going to always give you revelation about who you should be around and who not to be around and what direction you should go. And the revelation that they had, once they had worshiped, they received the revelation that says, now, do not go back to, to Herod. I want you to go back to your own country another way. When you, as a wise person in God, have experienced Jesus, it's impossible for you to go back to the Herods in your life. It's impossible for you to have the same association and go the, the same places you have been going. Now you're prone by God to go a different direction. You came to Jesus one way, but you've encountered Jesus. Now you leave Jesus going a whole different way. Your conversation is different. Now you've got something to talk about. Imagine these wise men had spent all of this time traveling and getting to, finally getting to Jesus. And they got there, and as they leave, they're saying, that, that was worth it. That was worth everything that we gave up to get here, to be at the presence and the feet of Jesus. When you know that everything you do was really worth it, that you've completed your assignment, and then you can rejoice because you finally got to the place where you ultimately need to be. There are people who are still trying to find their way to Jesus. They're still back there journeying, trying to go to every Herod and every Herodus and every place trying to get to Jesus. But when you get to him, I promise you, you're going to leave differently. Those wise men had a story to tell. I'm telling you, when you've got a story like that to tell, people will listen to your story. Because they can tell when you've been in the presence of Jesus. Amen and amen. And then in verse number 12, chapter 2, verse number 12. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. It's unclear how many wise men there were. They believe maybe three wise men because they mentioned in the scripture gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. They say, well, maybe one had gold and one had frankincense and one had myrrh. Well, they all could have had gold. They all could have had frankincense. Ten could have had gold. It doesn't give you a number. But one thing that is clear is that when they showed up at King Herod's palace, there was enough in them that it frightened Herod and all of Jerusalem. 
When you come and you're seeking God, it begins to trouble those around you. Satan begins to become trouble when you really want to give yourself away to God. When you really want to commit your all to God, it troubles Herod. It troubles the people who do not know God. And when they left, I'm telling you, everything was different in their lives and in the lives of those around them. Don't miss your blessing. Seek the counsel of wise people. Be a visionary. Complete the divine assignment that God has for you. And after you come to know Jesus, don't be the same. Leave differently. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for your wonderful word today. For God, wise men still seek you. 